chapter one, part two. Was that me, said Christopher Robin, in an odd voice, hardly daring to believe it. That was you, Christopher Robin said. Nothing, but his eyes got larger and larger, and his face got pinker and pinker. So Winnie the Pooh went round to his friend Christopher Robin, who lived behind a green door in, the, in another part of the forest. Good morning, Christopher Robin, he said. Good morning, Winnie the Pooh, said you. I wonder if you got such a thing as a balloon about you. A balloon? Yes, I just said to myself coming along, I wonder if Christopher Robin has such a thing as a balloon about him. I just said it to myself, thinking of balloons and wondering, well, what do you want a balloon for, you said. Winnie the Pooh looked around to see that nobody was listening. He put his paw to his mouth and he said in a deep whisper, honey. But you don't get honey with balloons. I do, said Pooh. Well, it just happened that you had been to a party the day before at the house of your friend Piglet, and you had, a bal you had balloons at the party. You had had a big green balloon, and one of Rabbit's relations had had a big blue one and had left it behind, being really too young to go to the party at all. And so you had brought the green one and the blue one home with you. Which one would you like? You asked Pooh. He put his head between his paws and thought very carefully. It's like this, he said. When you go after honey with a balloon, the great thing is not to let the bees know you're coming. Now, if you have a green balloon, they might think you were part of a tree and not notice you. And if you have a blue balloon, they might think you were part of the sky and not notice you. And the question is, which is more likely? Wouldn't they notice you underneath the balloon, you asked? They might or they might not, said Winnie the Pooh. You never can tell with bees. He thought for a moment and said, I shall try to look like a small black cloud, and that will deceive them. Then you had better have the blue balloon, you said. And so it was decided. Well, you both went out with the blue balloon, and you took your gun with you just in case, as you always did, and Winnie the Pooh went to a very muddy place that he knew of, and he rolled and rolled until he was black all over, and then when the balloon was blown up as big as big, and you and Pooh were both holding on to the string. You let go suddenly, and Pooh Bear floated gracefully up into the sky and stayed there, level with the top of the tree and about 20 feet away from it. Hooray, you shouted. Isn't that fine, shouted Winnie the Pooh down to you. Who, what do I look like? You look like a bear holding onto a balloon, you said. Not, said Pooh anxiously, not like a small black cloud in a blue sky. Not very much. Ah, well, perhaps from up here it looks different, and as I say, you can never tell with bees. There was no wind to blow him near to the tree, so there he stayed. He could see the honey, he could smell the honey, but he couldn't quite reach the honey. After a little while, he called down to you. Christopher Robin, he said in a loud whisper. Hello. I think the, the bees suspect something. What sort of thing? I don't know, but something tells me that they're suspicious. Perhaps they think that you're after their honey. It may be that. You never can tell with bees. There was another little silence, and then he called down to you again. Christopher Robin, yes? Have you an umbrella in your house? I think so. I wish you would bring it out here and, and walk up and down with it and look up at me every now and then and say, toot toot, it looks like rain. I think if you did that, it would help the deception which we are practicing on the bees. Well, you laughed to yourself, silly old bear. But didn't you say it aloud because you were so fond of him and you went home from your umbrella? Oh, there you are, called down Winnie the Pooh. As soon as you got back to the tree, I was beginning to get anxious. I've discovered that the bees are now definitely suspicious. Shall I put up my umbrella? Yes, but wait a moment. We must be practical. The important bee to deceive is the queen bee. Can you see which one is the queen bee from down there? No. A pity. Well, now, if you walk up and down with your umbrella saying, toot, toot, it looks like rain, I shall do what I can by singing a little cloud song such as a cloud might sing. Go. So while you walked up and down and wondered if it would rain, Winnie the Pooh sang this song. How sweet to be a cloud floating in the blue. Every little cloud always sings a loud. How sweet to be a cloud floating in the blue. It makes him very proud to be a little cloud. The bees were still buzzing as suspiciously as ever. 
Some of them indeed left their nest and flew all around the cloud as it began the second verse of the song. And one bee sat down on the nose of the cloud for a moment and then got up again. Christopher, ow, Robin, called out the cloud. Yes, I have just been thinking and I have come to a very important decision. These are the wrong sort of bees, are they? Quite the wrong sort, so I should think they would make the worst sort of honey, wouldn't you? Would they? Yes, so I think I shall come down. How? asked Pooh. Winnie the Pooh hadn't thought about this. If he let go of the string, he would fall bump, and he didn't like that idea. So he thought for a long time, and then he said, Christopher Robin, you must shoot the balloon with your gun. Have you got your gun? Of course I have, you said. But if I do that, it will spoil the balloon. But if you don't, said Pooh, I shall have to let go, and that would spoil me. When you put it like this, you saw how it was, and you aimed very carefully at the balloon and fired. Ow, said Pooh. Did I miss? You didn't exactly miss, but you missed the balloon. I'm so sorry, you said. And you fired again, and this time you hit the balloon, and the air came slowly out, and Winnie the Pooh floated down to the ground. But his arms were so stiff from holding on to the string of the balloon all that time that they stayed up straight in the air for more than a week, and whenever a fly came and settled on his nose, he had to blow it off. And I think, but I'm not sure that that is why he always was called Pooh. Is that the end of the story, asked Christopher Robin? That's the end of that one. There are others about Pooh and me, and Piglet and Rabbit and all of you. Don't you remember? I do remember, and then when I try to remember, I forget. That day when Pooh and Piglet tried to catch the heffalump, they didn't catch it, did they? No. Pooh couldn't because he hasn't any brain. Did I catch it? Well, that comes to the story. Christopher Robin nodded. I remember, he said, only Pooh doesn't very well, so that's why he likes having it told to him again, because then it's a real story and not just a remembering. That's just how I feel, said Chris. I said. Christopher Robin gave a deep sigh, picked his bear up by the leg, and walked off to the door, trailing Pooh behind. At the door, he turned and said, coming to see me have my bath? I might, he said. I didn't hurt him when I shot him, did I? Not a bit. He nodded and went out, and in a moment I heard Winnie the Pooh bump, 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 going up the stairs behind him. And that's the end of chapter one of Winnie the Pooh by A.A. Milne.